Now, hundreds have signed a petition against development plans at a park in Ealing. It's after the University of West London was given the go-ahead to build eight luxury homes on a site known as Mandela. Well, there are concerns that it will mean the loss of more green space in this conservation area. Well, Marie Lester and Simon Cannon are from the Campaign to Save Mandela and join me now. Guys, thanks very much for being here. Thank now, you. for those unfamiliar with this part of London, can you explain what it's like and why it's so important to the community? Well, this is uh, an area which prides itself for its trees and green spaces. And this particular area, the Mandela Park, is as you just said, in a conservation area. Uh, it was part of a site given to the university uh, and the University of West London promised that they would landscape it and preserve the trees. So it's uh, a, a really, really bad development that uh, they're going to be reneging on that promise and building basically a wall of houses, which are luxury houses. These are three-storey, four-bedroomed houses. Right. Um, now, it's an area that's been earmarked a number of times for development, perhaps ironically because it is so leafy, do you think? No, I don't. I, I think it, this is a developer's gold rush which is going on here. Um, the building of these houses is going to create millions of pounds for the university who seem to be more interested in the green stuff than our green spaces. Now, there are 20 trees on this site, 14, which, uh, uh, 14 of which are mature, and that's not to mention all the shrubbery, the wildlife and uh, the home of many birds including woodpeckers. How many children in London have ever seen a woodpecker? Now, Simon, just to bring you in, this petition that you guys have started has been generating support. What sort of reaction have you been getting from the community about these plans? Well, it's been really encouraging. In the last four or five days, we have have about 20 to 30 new signatures on that petition, and mainly from people within this area who feel strongly about preserving, protecting the conservation area. So we think that there's a growing momentum and we think there's real anger actually with the university for just going ahead, bulldozing the opinions of local residents. It has already bulldozed the original planning committee's refusal to grant this uh, planning permission. And it's, it's a fight to appeal to their legal and their moral sense of, of justice. I mean, we're losing vital green lungs, as they're being called, all over London. And the result of this will be more pollution in the air. Um, there will be fewer trees around, much less wildlife. And you've just had a very interesting feature on the importance of pollination. We, we have to stop these developments now, because once the green spaces are gone and there's building on them, it's gone forever. The, the other thing about this is, is making promises. The university has a duty to keep its promise. A university should be a seat of learning and it should set standards for its students and for the society at large. And if a university starts uh, to break its promises and to disrespect a green space on its own campus, what, what standards does, does this set for future generations? To play devil's advocate for one second, we're often hearing about a shortage of housing in the capital. There is space for it on this site. Some people would say, well, is this a case of just not in my backyard? No, I think obviously there's an important need for affordable housing. These houses are going to cost between one and one and a half million pounds easily in this site. And we should not be building houses. I mean, Sadiq Khan in his manifesto says the same thing. We should not be building houses at the expense of our green spaces and our trees. So there, there I think, obviously, we, we need affordable housing. This is not it. As I said, I think this is a developer's gold rush. This is an excuse just for people to make money. Well, we do have a comment from the university which we'd like to read to you. This is what they had to say in a statement. The University of West London have said that this petition is not an accurate reflection of the situation. All mature trees on the Mandela site will be retained. There will be a planting scheme at the front and rear of the site with new trees of comparable size to those immature trees lost. They continued, the site was to be laid out as landscaping unless the council approved an alternative use. 
use. The alternative use has now been agreed and the site will still retain its trees. Now, can I ask you both, what do you make of what they've said? Yes, now we consulted the Royal Institute of British Architects, REBA, about this. And uh, if we take just one tree, there's a mature horse chestnut tree, and the roots of this will extend 27 metres, which means that it will reach, the roots will reach half of the proposed houses. Once there is car parking and eight sizeable houses on this space, there won't be any space for mature trees. Right. So essentially, they're, they're going to be cut down in the end. It's just not feasible to build these houses and retain the mature trees, which are so central to this green space. And where do you both go from here? Because this scheme has been given the green light, so where does your campaign go next? We are going to be standing outside the university over the next two days, uh, giving out leaflets to raise awareness for this. Uh, and the petition is growing, as Simon said, by about 30 signatures every day. We want the University of West London to listen to the voice of Ealing, to keep their promise to the area, uh, and for the council to put some tree preservation orders uh, on, this, on the trees on this site, which they haven't done because they said that they think uh, they are sufficiently well protected because it's in a conservation area. So there are lots of double standards going on here, and we want the voice of Ealing to be heard. Well, Marie Lester and Simon Cannon, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you.